let's talk about US President Joe Biden. He's promised Israel ironclad support amid fears that Iran could retaliate over a strike on its embassy in Damascus last week. Iran's supreme leader says the attack which killed several senior Iranian commanders was equivalent to an attack on Iranian territory and that Israel must be punished. Israel has not claimed responsibility but is widely considered to have been behind the strike. And it's being reported that intelligence services in the United States and other allied officials believe a significant attack by Iran is imminent and could come in the form of a direct missile or through a proxy like Hezbollah in Lebanon. Let's bring in now international security expert Will Geddes and former British Army commander Colonel Richard Kemp. Um, Richard, let me come to you first, if I may, just because um, you're obviously the man uh, in that sort of region. You're in that region quite a lot. Um, what's being said in Israel about this imminent attack? Do they believe it to be imminent? Do they believe that it will come from Lebanon? What are they saying? I'm, I'm actually in Israel now, and um, there's, there's a great deal of apprehension on the streets of the various cities of Israel uh, about the possibility of an attack. Because if, if there is an attack by Iran, either from Iran itself or from Lebanon, it could be more devastating than the, the huge number of rocket attacks they've seen against Israel so far in this war. Um, but, but either way, there, there could well be uh, an assault from Iran directly using ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drones, and the same from its proxy Hezbollah in Lebanon. I think I would suggest if, if one of those two attacks does happen, and of course that's far from certain, then the more likely possibility would be from Lebanon because I think Iran deeply fears the retaliation it would get onto its own soil, uh, which could help undermine the stability of the route. I think that's perhaps the more likely of the two. But also, of course, uh, Iran, through its proxies using the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, could also target embassies around the world, blowing up embassies as they have done in the past, Israeli embassies. Uh, but of course, Israel is their embassies are well protected, they will be on the on guard against that, as they are here. The, the Israeli uh, Defence Force has a very capable uh, missile defence system. They've called up reservists in the last few days to man an additional series of uh, air defence systems. And the US also, I believe, has uh, offered uh, and will, will make, uh, make available its own uh, air missile defence systems in the region if, if that is necessary. So I think, I think it's, it's a possibility, it's by no means certain, Israel's ready to, um, to deal with it if it occurs and, of course, to retaliate if that happens, which is a, another certainty. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Will, let me come to you because you um, obviously cover international security in many different places and um, interesting there uh, what Colonel Richard Kemp was saying, that, you know, there are so many targets now in the world, aren't there? Because, you know, they might decide, well, you know, how about the Israeli embassy in London? How about the Israeli embassy in Paris? How about the Israeli embassy uh, in another part of the world? You know, and, and the tentacles of Iran... Um, have reached this this country before, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And I mean, I agree entirely with what Richard has been saying in terms of how Iran is not going to be, I would have thought, so um, overt in terms of any kind of retaliation. They have a long history of operating on a very covert level. Um, however, Israeli embassies around the world are incredibly well protected, probably more so than almost any other nation embassies than the United States, I'd say. So I think Iran would be more likely to use its proxies like Hezbollah. Hamas have been rendered to a certain degree inert, although they're obviously a fairly, fairly resilient opponent. But it's going to be Hezbollah and other elements that Iran has proxy financed and backed. Iran will never really break cover themselves. If they do, they know they're going to get the wrath of the United States. And I'm only pleased that, although it's very much down the line, that Biden has stepped forward and made such a bold statement in terms of his support for Israel. Yes, exactly. And, and Richard, let me ask you about that, because obviously until that moment, until Joe Biden came out and said that there would be a steadfast kind of defence of Israel and its right to, uh, uh, to retaliate or do whatever if Iran was to, to make a strike, um, you know, things were looking a bit iffy between the White House and, uh, and Jerusalem up until that moment, because we'd heard, of course, the calls for a ceasefire. Uh, we'd heard Cameron as well um, echoing sort of Joe Biden's calls that, you know, our support for Israel is not con unconditional and all of that. Has this kind of given a bit more sucker, if you like, to, to the Israeli government in terms of what they're doing? 
Well, I think, I think so, but but it's I think Biden's stance is still quite iffy. Of course, so far he's been pretty strong, pretty resilient in the support he and forces have given to and, and intelligence services have given to Israel since this war began. Quite rightly, as has Britain, of course. But he has been very critical in recent weeks, particularly since the unfortunate uh, accidental killing of seven aid workers in Gaza. Um, that, that I think, should be seen to an extent as being he's talking to the anti-Israel elements of the US electorate. Mm. Uh, obviously, one can't just sort of assume that he's going to be 100% supportive, but I think one ought to bear that in mind. Um, but, but it's also very dangerous for him to say that sort of even if it is for domestic political purposes, because, of course, it encourages Hamas to keep fighting. It encourages Iran to threaten Israel and even to attack Israel, to continue using its proxies, because um, Biden's words, and as we've seen from, from David Cameron in the UK and elsewhere, uh, they, they give the impression that Israel is becoming increasingly isolated and that international community will pressurize Israel to stop fighting. And if Israel stops fighting, that's about the only ch chance that Hamas has got for survival, as Will rightly says, their last leg. They're still fighting. They are resilient, as he said. But th this sort of, these sort of words from the likes of Cameron and Biden and Blinken do give them hope and, and do encourage them to, to fight harder and, to, and to, to refuse, for example, the um, the ceasefire terms that have been proposed in exchange for Israeli hostages uh, in Gaza. Absolutely. Will, now back to you. We've seen previously warnings from, um, from MI5 and MI6 in this country that there are some Iranian dissidents here um, who might become targets if, if things get hotter in the Middle East, if you like. Um, I presume we remain on pretty high alert here. We saw just the other night Champions League football matches were, were, were thought to be a target. Um, Lots of people seem to think that there will be some kind of terrorist attack somewhere soon. What are you hearing? Um, well, to be honest, I mean, I'm pretty much con would concur with what you're saying, Mike. We're at the substantial level, which is kind of mid-range in the threat levels, which mm. means that a threat is likely, not highly likely, which is the next level up. And I would say that we should anticipate, I'm certainly forecasting, that I think we will be raising the threat level in the imminent period as to exactly when that will be based obviously on intelligence that comes in that will provide us with information as to whether it is a viable threat and there are viable threats that are coming through but i think the problem that we have is any country that is going to support israel will have accepted the fact that they will get potentially collateral damage as a result of it iran has financed certainly protests organizations individuals they're very insidious in how they operate, Mike. So, you know, the fact is Iran will operate in a very covert capacity. They, they won't be overt. And, you know, Richard, in terms of his position on the ground, he knows certainly better than me in what the position is there with the Israelis. But I would say everybody's a little bit sceptical about certainly Biden, about Cameron, as to whether, although they're coming up with the political rhetoric, are they going to actually back it up? That's the, that's the big question. Yeah. And finally, Richard, just back to you. Um, we saw that um, um, assassination, I suppose, if you want to call it that, of the three sons of one of the Hamas leaders. Um, there were lots of pictures of him looking not particularly, um, shall we say, bothered by the fact that three of his sons who were fighting for Hamas had been killed by uh, Israeli forces. Um, do they feel as if they're getting near the end of this in Israel? Well, I think it's an interesting... Uh, um incident because what were these three pretty senior and important members of the Hamas terrorist organization, the sons of Haniyeh, what were they doing above ground which where they were killed? That would suggest to me that a lot of the Hamas infrastructure underground has been destroyed by Israel. It, it, certainly Israel says it has destroyed a, a lot of it, obviously not all, but a lot of it has been destroyed, which which makes them even more vulnerable. So I think there will be a feeling among the Hamas leadership, whether it's Yahya Sinwar in Gaza or Ishmael Haniyeh in Qatar in his uh, six-star hotel or whatever is in there. Right. There will be a feeling that, that things are going to go badly soon. And and I think the um, 
that you know the, the reality is when Israel attacked Rafa, that's Hamas's last bastion. Obviously, it's not the end of Hamas completely, but it will will indicate the destruction of Hamas to a very large degree. And that's why it's so important that the world, the US, the UK, other countries back Israel as much as they possibly can to push on to the end. Let's not forget also that that's what Arab countries want. Most Arab countries in the region want Israel to destroy Hamas. And some of them have been actively helping Israel to do so. Yes. Well, we can all hope that it comes to an end uh, sooner rather than later. Colonel Richard Kemp, thank you very much indeed. Will, thanks very much indeed to you as well.